So today we're going to talk about the development of two new scripts in Northeast India, the case of the Wancho and the Tangsa languages. And we're going to hear from members of the community, including from the creator of the Wancho script, Mr. Banwang Losu. So the overview of this talk, there'll be a brief overview of the languages and a brief overview of the different writing systems used for Tangsa languages since time immemorial. And then we'll discuss in detail the Tangsa script of Mr. Lakung Joka Mosang, who passed away on the 11th of July last year. And then we'll talk about the one church script created by Ban Wan Losu. And he will explain his um, reasons and inspiration for creating it. So I'm not going to talk about the Tangsa languages in much detail. You can read about this here, a considerable diversity of languages, not all mutually intelligible. Um, these are just some sentence examples of the same rather simple sentence in four varieties of Tangsa with a possible Romanized orthography on the right-hand side that is in different levels of community approval. But as you can see, these languages are not exactly um, mutually intelligible. There's a lot of difference between them. Okay, so the history of writing in Tangsa can be broadly divided into six stages. And I haven't got time to talk about all of these except to give you an opportunity to see what they are. So there are these folk stories of an ancient form of writing done on the skin of animals that was lost when it was eaten by the ancestors. There's the writing down of word lists by scholars, linguists and others. There's the Roman based orthographies designed to be used as common languages for more than one tongue's variety. Then there's orthographies that were designed for just one single one of these 80 subtribes, more informal orthographies, which is essentially using the Roman script, but without aiming to make it phonemic. And finally, the non Roman based scripts, which is really what today is about. So we can't exemplify all of these, but we can talk about the traditional story of the loss of writing. Because while we know nothing about what this writing was like, we know the story. And you can quickly read through this, how the creator distributed writing to everybody, but the Heva Nagas, which is Heva is the um, native word for this group of different languages. Tangsa is a more recently created term. The Hebanagas were the last to get there. There was nothing left. So they put their writing on animal skin. They got hungry, they ate it, and that's why they lost it. This is a very common story in the Eastern Himalayan region. And here is this story presented in three different scripts that are currently in use. The orthography for the Mashaung variety created by Reverend Gamwin, the script of Lakum Mosang and the um, orthography that is being developed in Myanmar, the Tangshan Naga unified orthography. There isn't time to compare these, but you can see that these are three very careful attempts to render these languages phonemically. I just wanted to briefly to mention the first indigenous Roman orthography, the Naimong orthography in the 1970s. Reason why I wanted to mention it is that this is also a phonemic orthography created by people who did not have uh, linguistic expertise. But because some of the other Tangsa subtribes and some of the leaders of those could not understand it, they said, well, you can't use this. So this early and very um, well thought out attempt to write the language was in fact, um, um, in a sense, banned. Okay. so. Lakon Mosang script, created in 1990. Here we have a photograph of me with the late Lakon Mosang on the left with his um, beautiful poster explaining the consonants of his script behind him and the two most um, long-term and committed of his students standing to the right. And they are the ones who have taken over in part the, the running of this script. The basic principles of the script are very, very interesting. So 48 symbols for vowels and sounds considered by the script's inventor to be vowel-like, such as a syllable final ang 
and syllabic, syllabic nasal sounds. These are ums that go in front of a word. So if you have a word like noun, this um is a syllabic nasal. These are listed first. And not only are these listed first, but there are four quite different symbols for each one of these, which we name tone one, tone two, tone three, and tone four, because they cover the four distinctive tones of the Mashaung variety of Tangsa. So this language requires tones to be written. You can't leave them out in the way that you can in almost every other orthography and script that I'm aware of. We just want to hear what Lakum Mosan actually said, how he used to explain the script. <laughs> And here are some examples of um, handwritten documents in the script. This is all that was available until the creation of the font relatively recently. And this is the most recent document, textbook approved for use in government schools in December 2020. The current situation. So the first thing was making the font, the Unicode proposal submitted in January 2020, that should say January 2021, yes, and accepted by the Unicode committee on the 25th of January. But submitting a Unicode proposal is not a five minute job. It took the whole of 2020 to write. So fortunately, I was in the field in January when we started this, and we were able to revise it using Facebook. Um, and that was one of the sort of standout events of 2020 that we were able to keep our work going. The Tungsa Script Development Committee, having been formed in 1999, started promoting it. They started preparing a primer using the new font that um, myself and um, former PhD student, Kellen Parker Van Dam produced. And then teaching materials started to be developed rapidly. School teaching has commenced and a 15 day course for teaching the language teachers ongoing in January and February 2021. There's just some photographs of the Tungsa Script Development Committee. And I'd like now to hand it over to Wang Lung to say something about the current developments of the Tungsa Script. This is Wang Lung Mushang belonging to Tangsa tribe of Arunachal Pradesh, India. Speaking forward, I am one of the many individuals who intends to preserve own language as far as possible. It is an universal saying that goes on, death and life are in the power of tongue. And yes, our saying in Mushang coincides with the same as bom hallam ji luk mai nga bom balam ji jang mai pa meaning as harmonious as fish is the result of good words spoken but swords and spears are the result of bad words spoken keeping this kind of saying in mind Our people indeed are trying to have a writing system to preserve our language. So with the help of foreign scholars, an orthography now called as Gambian system was adopted in the last couple of decades with the help of some alphabets to mark high, low, mid and glottal stop tones. But the lingual diversity among the tribe could not serve the purpose of using it commonly. Moreover, the regular English medium school children found it hard to accept them. It was in this juncture that 
jak lakhum jokka musang created his tangsar common script which almost all the subtribes intellectual representative accepted it whole heartedly so a committee was formed on 2nd october 2019 with a purpose to promote the script and to create awareness among the tangsa public about its importance so now through the advice of this committee i printed a primer book which they in turn sought the approval of the state education department to legalize the script to be taught in the schools of the area do now the education department is yet to give the declaration to be taught it is going to be happen soon last fortnight the owner of rk memorial school jairampur sought a teaching faculty from the script committee in which an expert was detailed and about 10 teachers took intensive coaching in their final exams proved that they learned the script efficiently so seeing all this recent development we are having hope that very soon our people will have a writing system that will help us in preserving our beautiful language and we will always remain grateful to all that help and are helping us to happen especially let lakum joka mushang for his enormous contribution ara tangsa nu mol si ara ka rong lo ya mol nyo si cheng number 1 han lo a chwa ka tu ma te lo a vi a ngon hu ma te lo se vi a jom sa ma a wang shu ke bu a jum sama a dang sho he wa tang sa phun a ra tang sa nu mol si ar ka ra so we're now going to turn to talking for some time about the one chore language which is a group of more or less intelligible varieties spoken in longding district in arunachal pradesh It's not been linguistically described save for a short article and word list from Berling and Wangsa in 1998 describing a lower one chore variety and the variety which um Banwang Losu the co-presenter today speaks is an upper one chore variety you can see from this um table that we've included here an example of some words this is the first few words in Berling and Mankai's list Berling and Mankai once Wangsa um in their list and this list um you can see the ones which are more or less um cognates are shaded in gray the ones which appear to be more or less entirely different words are shown in uh, are shown not shaded in gray so there's a considerable difference between the varieties on the right hand side is the one chore script Okay so the story of the creation of the one chore script so back in 2001 Banwang reported in his book from 2013 that he discovered that the complexity of our language is unable to be written in roman script and he thought about it for some time and worked on it for many years leading up to the publication of the first edition of the one chore script to the animated video teaching the script which you can see online if you can copy down that um reference there but if you just um look up teaching one cho script you'll probably be able to find it 2016 to 2018 the writing of a proposal to include the one cho script in unicode this was um the main proposal was written up by michael everson but we had a number of meetings involving uh banwang and myself um we were talking very early in the morning from uh where we were in india about it by um 
Zoom or Skype or whatever we used at that time. And since 2019, the OneShow script has been included in Unicode. Fonts and keyboards are made. It can be used on mobile phones and by Facebook. So why create these new scripts? When I've spoken in the past about this script and others, some colleagues have questioned why we should be supporting these scripts. Wouldn't it be better just to write these languages in the Roman script? So let's hear from Banwang himself. Hi everyone, I am Banwal Losu from Arunachal Pradesh, India. Here I am presenting on Wancho script development. Initially, I was working on socio-economics of Wancho, which was written in English, and it has to be translated into Wancho using Roman script. But it was very interesting that I could not write the actual pronunciation of my language with 26 Roman letters. Since then, I stopped the translation work and started thinking on the unique sounds of Wancho language, realizing that new writing system is necessary to capture all the sounds, including tones. As it falls under David Barman language family, where tone plays very significant roles, Wancho language varies slightly from village to village, so it was very difficult for me to understand initially. Making word list was how I started. And then find out the missing phoneme of a particular word and then represent it with symbol. After writing about 2000 words, I found all the required sounds. Another complicated task was the creation of symbols with respect to the sound. Symbols must be relevant to the native. It must be smooth and fast while writing in running hand. It must be economical and occupy less space. Looks should be beautiful and attractive. Keeping all this in mind, I started designing the latest, attempting the most popular and significant items like a hornbin feather, which we use in a headgear during the festival when dancing, singing, etc. Slowly, the latter derived from original form into new innovative shapes. We have 15 vowels and 29 consonants, total 44 letters. Some of this might look similar to others script but it is not plagiarized from them. Later a uh, comes from feather, later pa comes from the symbol sun, later fur comes from bow and date to mark of one two female, later o comes from birds. Similarly all letters have roots and etymology. Next challenges were to match one two alphabet with international phonetic alphabet. To explain others about new sounds of Wancho letters, which I learned from internet. Finnish work was shared to friends and local officers. Soon, without any hesitation, they come into support by donating money of their capacity for the works of seminars and conferences, etc., conducted in different places of Wancho region. Then, inter community unanimously approved the new writing system as Wancho script, followed by development development of computer typhus forms and publication of book, the Wancho script. After a few days of book publication in 2013, a senior linguist, Dr. Stephen Moray from Latrop University, Australia, met me during his visit to India. It was most crucial and turning point for me to have such an experienced linguist who wanted to work for Wancho script development. Then, we place a proposal for inclusion of Wancho script into Unicode, which accepted after three years in 2019, followed by development of Unicode form. Wancho language has been teaching informal education system as a third language since 2016. Now, government of Arunachal Pradesh is supporting for development of study materials, teachers' salary, etc. The first primer book was sponsored by Tata Still CSR. Next Textbooks are developing under the supervision of Wancho Letter Mission. Contents of textbook is more emphasis on the documentation of dying folk tales, folk songs, proverbs, short stories, local items, rituals, traditional laws and customs, etc. The Wancho language is on the way. Miles to travel. Thank you. I had a discussion with. Banwang, after the 
uh, he prepared that small video which you have just seen and talked a little more about some of the shapes of the letters and put together this slide so you could see a little bit about how these letters are, come, are, are created. But there's no direct connection between the sounds that are implied in these letters and the objects that they are representing. I wanted to finish off just by showing uh, one thing very quickly. This is the COVID-19 message in Wancho. It's a piece of work that um, Banwang and I did together back in May through the translation commons. Um, and it was possible because the script is accepted in Unicode, it's possible to do this in um, platforms like this. We also uh, wrote the language in what we called a simplified romanization. This was a version of language that was not really able to mark the tones, but the vowel length and the nasalization of vowels was to at least some extent possible in this system so that you can see the relationship between them. And finally, for those of you who are um, more into um, uh, kind of linguistic analysis to actually give you what the text looks like and at least um, the transcription of one line of it um, to see how this language um, fits in terms of um, its general um, verb final uh, profile. So um, that I think is the end of our talk. Thank you.